Tucked away deep in the Himalayas, landlocked between the world's two largest countries, is the small kingdom of Bhutan, the land of the dragons. Boasting the world's happiest people and surrounded by natural beauty, this nation of less than a million people remains a mystery to most of the world. In part one of my three-day tour with Flying Fox, we explored the capital city of Thimphu. On day two, we took a road trip up over the Dochula Pass to the country's original capital of Punaka. It was a stunning road trip through this ancient kingdom, and here's how it went. Good morning, guys. It's day two here in Bhutan, and yesterday we just came from the airport from Paro and got to see a few things through that valley heading to Thimpu, which is the capital. And today we're going to Punaka, which is the old capital of Bhutan. And we're gonna go over the Dochula Pass, which will be up almost about 10,000 feet. And if we're lucky, and if the weather clears a little bit, we'll be getting some beautiful views of the surrounding Himalayas. So we're gonna jump in the car and start the drive up the pass. So let's go. just heading out east of the city of Thimphu and the Thimphu Valley here and we're seeing one of the oldest forts here in Bhutan built in 1629 and it was the strategic location as you're entering the east of the Thimphu Valley here. As we're looking back on the valley of Thimphu you can see the Buddha statue that we were at yesterday and some of the mountains and then the valley that took us from Paro yesterday. So we're gonna keep heading east up into the mountains here to the pass so let's go. just made it up to the Dochula Pass and unfortunately we are deep in a cloud so if it wasn't so foggy and cloudy up here we'd see the Himalaya range way out here we'd see some beautiful snow-capped peaks but here on top of the Dochula Pass we have the Bhutan Victory Memorial and there's 108 of these stupas signifying the victory that Bhutan won over some military groups in the south of Bhutan. This is a memorial for the 100 soldiers that died and there's 108 of these stupas which is a holy number here in Buddhism. So yeah, let's uh, walk around the memorial here and check it out. Rukwangel Stupa, which means Bhutan victory. So, as I said, like we had a war with, we overcame the militant group known as Ulfa. So, in that memory, we had built in 2003 for the soldiers who had fought very bravely and for the Eurek symbols, the Stupas were found. So foggy up here but there's a little cafe and then right next to the cafe we have a picture of the Himalaya range so I can show you what we should be seeing if it was a clear day but beautiful peaks you can uh, the highest mountain in Bhutan is Gangkar Phunsem how do you say it <laughs> Gangkar Phunsem so yeah we can look at the the Himalaya range that would be here just beyond 
these trees if it wasn't so foggy. So now we're gonna head into the cafe here. And again, we're at like 10,000 feet, so it's cold. So hoping to get like a nice hot coffee in the cafe. So that's Dochula Pass. Again, unfortunately, we're not getting the views, but cool to see all of these stupas at the Memorial Garden here and nice to get like a cozy coffee at that cafe. And so anyways, we're gonna jump back in the car here and head down the other side of the pass here to Punaka. So let's go. We've just been coming down from Dochula Pass uh, down to Punaka and there's a bunch of these yak just on the side of the road here so we've pulled over to see some of these animals that are here on the side of the road. just been coming down the pass here and we're getting our first view of the Punaka Valley below and we have these like beautiful fields here. We can see like some traditional Bhutan homes and just layers of mountains way off in the distance and Punaka is still about we're still about 40 minutes away but it'll just be on the other side of that ridge there so yeah beautiful views of the farmland and some of these misty mountains. So we've just come all the way down to the valley here and we're in the fertility valley. One, this is a place of just amazing agriculture. They can grow so many things down here. But then it's also a place that people come if they're having trouble to have a child. They'll come here and do this hike to the fertility temple. So fair warning, we're going to see lots of paintings of phalluses as we walk through the fertility valley here. Um, but it'd be a very interesting cultural thing and what What's the reason for it? It's like to scare the evils. And so all of the paintings of the penises, they are to keep away the evil spirits, keep away the bad luck, the misfortune. And there was um, a legend of the divine madman that fought off some of the demons with his phallus. So anyways, we're gonna be walking through the valley here and yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. That was so unexpected, just walking through that little village and all of those phalluses and sorry if that was kind of explicit, but it's just part of the uh, culture of the Fertility Valley here. And again, there's a lot of uh, legend of the phalluses fighting off some of the demons and the bad luck and bad fortune here. But now we're just walking through these beautiful terraced fields. We're just surrounded by mountains in this valley here. We have like a little irrigation system that's feeding water to all of these fields here. And it's just a beautiful walk through the fertility valley.
So we've just walked through some of the fields here and we're kind of in the bottom of the valley here in this little village and it's the most densely clustered village here in Bhutan and there's just tons of these beautiful houses, there's all these shops, they're doing live paintings out on the street so you can see them paint some of this beautiful artwork and yeah just a beautiful beautiful home, so much detail on all of the windows and beautiful paintings so yeah beautiful walk through the through the valley here it's just super peaceful here in the valley you can hear some of the birds chirping it's really quiet and then there's just all these really cool just like little shrines here and all these beautiful prayer flags just flapping in the wind surrounded by the mountains so we're gonna keep walking through this valley here a little bit more uh, it looks like there's another village coming up here so just keep walking So people come from, well, here in Bhutan, but from all over the world to walk this valley through this through these beautiful fields. And then you go up a little bit further to the temple, which is just up there, another 10, 15 minute walk up the hill here. And it's supposed to help you conceive a child. And so again, as we're walking through here, we have all of these phallus paintings on all of the walls and there's like tons of like souvenirs of them. Um, and it's supposed to help with the fertility and it's also, also has that history of the divine madman who used his phallus to fight off the demons here in Bhutan and up from the Dochula Pass. So it's about six or seven bucks to go up to the fertility temple. So I don't think we're gonna do the extra little hike up there, but just walking through this valley, just beautiful fields, cute little villages, lots of little craft shops, and just a beautiful little hike through Bhutan here. So we're gonna jump in the car and keep heading to Punaka. So we've just made it down to Punaka and we're down to only 1,200 meters or about 4,000 feet now. So it's actually warming up a little bit here and it's about lunchtime. So we're gonna get some tali at this uh, restaurant here and then we'll continue exploring. here and we have just a about a five minute drive to the fortress of Punaka so let's drive we've just driven a little ways along the river here and right where these two rivers meet the Fochu and the Mochu we have the beautiful Punaka Zong, this old fortress right here. And you just have these beautiful mountains off in the distance. And this is just our first view. We're gonna go check out the fortress over here. But just wanted to get this beautiful view of the two rivers joining and then the fortress with the mountains in the background. So we've just come to the main parking for the Punake Zong, this beautiful building just right at the confluence of these two rivers and we cross this little bridge to go over the river and then we'll be able to check out the fort, so let's go.
So now this is to show our respect, honor to the big fort mm. because this was historically built to unify the country into one and it used to be the district administrative office so everybody owns their own scarf you can recognize by their scarves like king or the yellow then the ministers with the orange the parliamentarians with the blue the highly ranked officer with the red and the judicial was the green so we the general public owns the white scarf and we're at the main entrance of the fort and it's just this beautiful majestic tall entrance just beautiful painting beautiful orange yellow color to it so we're gonna head up into the fort now and again this was the administrative capital of Bhutan until about like the 1950s so yeah let's uh, head up and check out the fort here So we've just entered the Punake Zong, and as you enter up those grand stairs, there's just this beautiful room with these massive gold prayer wheels. And then we're gonna enter a few courtyards here, and this is the second oldest Zong, or fortress, built here in Bhutan. It was built in 1637, just after that one that we saw as we were exiting the Thimpu Valley earlier today. And again, now this side here is gonna be all administrative, and then we'll go to the other side, and there'll be just religious temples and shrines. And there's just such beautiful architecture in here. This is known to be one of the most beautiful zongs here in Bhutan. So I'm really looking forward to just walking around, admiring some of this beautiful architecture and showing you guys the inside. So not sure what all I can and can't film, but I'll try to show you as much as I can. But so far, this place is just beautiful. Alright guys, so we've just come to the second courtyard here and we have the entrance to the main tower uh, which is where some of the relics are kept that were taken from Tibet and that were kind of hidden here which was one of the reasons they needed a fortress here was to protect from invasions from Tibet. But yeah, just such beautiful architecture and this thing is like four or five stories high. We've just come back down from the fort now, but that was one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. There's so much detail and so much woodwork and color all throughout. And then, yeah, unfortunately we weren't able to film too much inside some of the buildings, but we went into one of the shrines and there were just over a hundred monks just chanting in there. And there were these massive Buddha statues. There was the statue of the unifier of Bhutan, which is the one that built this in the 1600s. And yeah, it was just such a beautiful interior palace, um, checking out some of those courtyards. And I really wish I could have shown you the inside of the shrine because it was just very magical seeing all those monks chanting in there, all of the beautiful artwork, massive gold statues, and really unbelievable. Anyway, so we've come back out of the fortress now and we'll explore a little bit more here and then eventually we're gonna head to a suspension bridge that goes over one of the rivers here. So. Yeah, let's keep exploring. We just 
had about a five minute drive just around the river here and we have just a five minute walk and we'll be at the longest suspension bridge so let's go All right, guys, so our last stop for the day here, again, not too far from the Panuka Zong, is the longest suspension bridge here in Bhutan. It's 250 meters, and it's going over the Pochu River here, and it's just covered in prayer flags, and it's just surrounded by beautiful mountains. And it was built in 1997 just to connect the people of the village over there so that they could just easily cross the river here. So, yeah, let's uh, walk across this bridge. Probably here in the middle. Are, are you doing this? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wobbly there in the middle but um, yeah very beautiful with all the prayer flags surrounded by these mountains and just beautiful views overlooking the river yeah. and we'll eventually cross back over. just made it back across the suspension bridge and that's about it for day two in Bhutan and our little day trip to Punaka. It was really cool seeing the fort and the fertility valley, the suspension bridge and doing the pass. So we're gonna head back, we have about a two hour drive, we're gonna head back up over Dochlu Pass and end the night in Thimpu. So that's about it for hi? today. Hello. Yeah, sure. Hi. Hi! Who are you? Marcy. Marcy, where are you from? Mexico. Mexico? Oh, I was just in Mexico City. Love it. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. See you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna head back to Thimpu and just enjoy the evening in the capital city there. And tomorrow we'll have an early morning start to head up to the famous Tiger Monastery in Para. So, yeah, we'll head back to Thimpu and we'll see you guys in the morning.